Uh, good evening, everyone who is coming to this very special session of uh, ICAT Stories. ICAT stands for the International Conferences on Appropriate Technology. And uh, we are very happy that the 10th ICAT is going to be in Sudan uh, in November next year. So we've been organizing, uh, the, the Sudanese Knowledge Society have been organizing this set of uh, sessions. We called it uh, in Arabic, Hejwat Aikat, and in English it's uh, Aikat Stories, uh, because many of us have been uh, to these conferences. And um, uh, we've got uh, varied experiences because there were people who were uh, at the beginning of their, or were still students when they first started to go to ICAT. And there were ones who were midway, and there were ones who were more entrenched in their professions and, uh, and fields. Uh, and we've all benefited in different ways. So in the past um, events, we started these events, the first se session was in uh, was uh, early, early this month, it was on the 4th. Uh, and then we had one uh, the following Saturday, and this is um, the fourth one. Uh, uh, and in each session, uh, four or five from the Sudanese Knowledge Society people who have been to the sessions uh, uh, tell us about they tell us about their experiences, what they've gained, what what they've done, what they've seen there that grabbed their attention how they feel about the whole experience and their take on appropriate technology. We, we visited some conceptual uh, aspects of appropriate technology and we looked at personal experiences. Um, so this session, we are very, very, very proud to have two of uh, uh, INAT or the International Network on Appropriate Technology uh, who uh, are joining us, and I can see also uh, John Tarakan on the call. Uh, our um, we have uh, uh, Brian Stevenson, who's uh, an engineer. I, 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 I what I posted, uh, what we posted about uh, you and Chuck, uh, Brian, is that um, the two of you coming on this session is very much uh, it, it exemplifies the diversity in INAT, which is what we've been trying to portray, that it is not only science and technology fields who are interested in, in it would be interested in, in the conferences. It's people from every field, because as we know, it, it has got all these dimensions, the, the economic, the social, the, the cultural, the, the environmental, uh, the, the, the political, it's got all these different aspects and therefore would draw people from a, a multiple disciplines. So this is what we've been trying to, um, to discuss in these sessions and try and draw in uh, people from, from different professions. Uh, so when, I, when we posted, we said, oh, we've got a, an engineer and a philosopher. And that is something that really exemplifies the diversity, how further away could you be in terms of, of, of faculties, but still you both met in, in INAT and worked towards uh, the same goal. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm very happy to welcome our, our speakers, uh, Professor uh, 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 Charles Berharin and uh, uh, Professor uh, Brian Stevenson. And I'm very happy also to see that uh, Professor uh, John Tarakan, who's coming from uh, uh, the engineering field as well uh, is on the call and I hope he will also make an intervention. Um, okay, so this is where we are. And um, I, we, we, we would like, um, I mean, the, the, pe the people from the SKS on the call um, are uh, Marwan Awad, an engineer, Sheza Mohammed, an engineer, Fatma Ali from the sciences. Uh, I, I, I don't know uh, uh, who else is. Uh, there is Isra from the information uh, technology, computer science and mathematics, actually Isra. 
and myself from computer sciences. Um, uh, 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 Ahmed is uh, there is uh, Ahmed iPhone. Uh, if you would just um, introduce yourself, Ahmed. Uh, I think that's the only person I haven't. Uh, I I don't know know. Uh, he might be a guest. We basically have an open uh, platform where people can join in via Zoom or uh, watch on the Facebook. Uh, later on, there will be a chance for people to ask questions. So Isra will be looking at the feed in the in the Facebook if there are questions for you. So without further ado, so I don't take much time. Uh, I want to give the floor to uh, Chuck and Brian and uh, and 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 John Farrakhan if he's interested uh, to 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 just give. Uh, their feel on this. I have a, a couple of questions that I sent you, but I want first to hear, you know, what, what you've uh, thought to tell us and tell us, tell our uh, our uh, participants. Uh, thank you very much. So we we'll go, uh, Chuck, and then Brian. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Gada. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Excellent. So uh, I should start by saying what on earth philosophy has to do with science and engineering and uh, technology, architecture, computers, everything else. So why on earth am I talking to a group of people that historically have not had much to do with one another? So I think of philosophy as uh, what one of my favorite philosophers calls mountaintop vision. So the idea is as a philosopher, you climb to the top of a mountain and at the top of the mountain, you can see everything all around 360 degrees, but uh, you don't really have any idea whatsoever of the details. So philosophers are trying to really forecast what the future should be and the future for, uh, for the philosopher herself certainly, but uh, importantly, the future for the entire Earth's community. So that's the mission that I think that we as philosophers now have. It's quite different mission than in the past. Philosophers would speak for their own groups, whether they were African or Asian or European or North American. And now um, I think because of the catastrophes that we face, uh, global catastrophic global climate change, the sixth mass extinction, weapons of mass destruction, especially biological weapons, uh, terrorism, whether it's sponsored by states or by groups, and finally the, the uh, pandemics caused by these new found viruses. So we are in catastrophic circumstances and my idea is that philosophers standing on a mountaintop should try and project how we should move into the future. So that's the, that's the definition of philosophy that I use. So um, philosophy can only be done now by teams of uh, lots and lots of people. So it would be experts in virtually all of the intellectual disciplines. So that would include all of you, whether you're on the Zoom or on Facebook. And most importantly, philosophy has to include the members, the members of the communities that are going to be most impacted by changes in the way that science and technology are going to bring to their lives. So it's uh, philosophy is teamwork and that teamwork can only be done by all of the stakeholders that are going to be affected by any changes proposed by any of those elements of the community members, the technical specialists, philosophers like me, or um, NGOs, uh, national government organizations, uh, international organizations like World Bank. And so what we need is a complete transformation of the concept of development. Historically, development has paid a lot of attention to um, funding from the global north that is distributed to the global south. And in numerous cases, that funding is completely destructive of the survival and flourishing of the communities it was intended for. So what has to be done is to address that uh, north-south global divide, but the instruments for addressing the divide have to come from 
within the global south. So that's our commitment as a research team. And effectively, we've established this kind of philosophy that we call survival ethics. So it's the idea that virtually every human being has to be guaranteed the instruments for survival. And those instruments are very simple. Uh, there are seven of them. And the first is that you have to have a group that supports you. Second is you have to be able to control temperature either by clothes or by shelter. Third, you have three minutes uh, to take care of this one. You have to have clean air. Uh, four, you have to have uh, potable water, nutritious food, healthcare, and education. So those are the elements. And our claim as a research team is that we have to try to the best of our ability to make sure that every human being has taken care of those four elements and where possible to proceed beyond bare survival to a life of flourishing or well-being or happiness. So um, that's where I'm coming from as a philosopher who's taught at Howard University in Washington, DC for 54 years. Now, um, what is especially interesting about the topic that Gada has proposed is the uh, I, ICAT, so International Conference on Appropriate Technology. I've been going to these conferences for a number of years, have helped me tremendously with my research and the research of our, uh, our um, team. But uh, what was most stunning was the conference that we had in 2018. It was held in Porto Novo in Benin, and it was held at what is called Songhai Village. And that is what has actually transformed my idea about what we as a survival ethics team should be doing with the publications that we do and the teaching that we do. So uh, the, the Songhai Village was created by a Dominican priest named Godfrey Zamujo. He's Nigerian. He was educated all over the world, did his final education in Los Angeles, decided to bring all of the elements of his education to bear on creating a village in Porto Novo on land deeded him uh, for free by the, uh, the government of Benin. And he decided that there had to be three ethical components uh, to uh, the villages that he was going to set up. And the first was that the villages had to be rooted in their very soil, their agricultural soil, but also their cultural soil. So what was going to happen in the village had to be a continuation, a fulfillment of what had been happening in uh, the, that particular area, those kinds of villages for a very long period of time. So the fancy word for that is that the villages must be autochthonous. That means rooted in the soil. Auto is self and uh, thonos is the soil. So rooted in one's very own soil, both the earth and the culture. The second principle is that uh, these communities have to be autonomous. And that uh, comes from two words that mean self, auto, and nomoi, rule. That means that they have to be able to control their own lives. Absolutely critical. So if someone else is controlling the lives of members of communities, then their lives cannot be what it is that they are capable of creating. The third is that the villages have to be authentic and authentic means that they are responsible for the members of the communities, both for their survival and flourishing, but to the degree possible, they must become responsible for the neighboring communities to try and help them to achieve the status of eco villages that are truly ethical. So that's the biggest impact that ICAT has had uh, for me in my personal life. And our research team has published uh, maybe three or four articles on how that works. If any of you are interested in, uh, in reading those articles, uh, I can uh, send them to Gada and Gada can make them available um, through her uh, Sudanese Knowledge Society. So um, let me uh, stop talking because uh, I hate to talk. I'm much more interested in dialogue and give the floor to Brian. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Chuck. Um, 
I think one thing Chuck and I also have in common is uh, we both have a wife by the name of Rebecca. Um, but also uh, Chuck, uh, Dr. Tharakin on the call and myself were three uh, of those who went with Doc Father Zamojo to discover the Songhai villages that he had uh, when back in 2018 at the eighth ICAT. <clears throat> uh, I'm living in Benin where he is and he's now become my friend. Uh, and so that has been um, uh, a, a big thing for me. As you said, I'm an engineer and um, I remember coming out of university through the, um, the beginnings of the National Society of Black Engineers. And I had uh, a friend whose t-shirt said, let me be your problem solver. And that resonated with me because I said, aha, that is what we do. Because uh, engineers come in multiple stripes and we are, we look at things from uh, IT to dirt to uh, chemistry and all kinds of things, machines, obviously. And uh, what brings us together is that we're problem solvers. So when I first went to the, um, the first ICAT in Zimbabwe, um, I was and have always only been an adjunct professor, a guest. Um, but we, you know, I've, I met Dr. Tharakin and I met uh, Dr. Tremble and we became good friends. And when I first went to, to the uh, conference, I realized I was in the field of academics, people who write papers and present to one another. So I had to uh, develop that skill set. Um, but I also went there and I met Tom Dalgetty, who showed up with the first ICAT coming from Guyana, which is where I'm also from. And he had a big bag with bricks. And Tom Dalgetty was a practitioner of, at the higher level, he was talking, he wanted to talk about bricks and brick making and creating uh, a brick making industry. Um, so we do come in all stripes. Um, I'm going to wait for some of the questions to come, but uh, a little on philosophy, uh, appropriate technology, and I like to use also appropriate development, is technology as if people matter. And the people part gets into the philosophy. No technology necessarily has an opinion on how it's being used. It's the human behind it. And we are the ones with a conscience. We are the ones with an agenda. So when you look at development around the world, um, I think we're all interested in seeing development as if people matter. And I believe that is the heart and soul of appropriate technology. And that's why ethics becomes a critical part of it. Um, I'll also share one thing is that uh, I uh, was reading, uh, I'm reading a book right now by Wangari Mathai, who is Nobel laureate, uh, now passed away from Kenya. And um, it's her explanation or description of Africa's issues. Um, and I'll, I may mention some of the things I've been reading later on in the discussion. But I looked up, um, out of curiosity, globalization as one example. Um, I know what it is, and most of you know what globalization is. Um, and uh, the description that, was, that I found, and I'll read it to you, is that globalization, well, it's, it, it's not necessarily a definition, but it has 
accelerated since the 18th century due to advances in transportation and communication technology. Globalization has accelerated since the 18th century due to advances in transportation and communication technology. Um, behind those words, there's an ethic. And the ethic I would summarize as greed. And that word will never show up in the description of globalization. And when you delve more into any discussion on the subject, you will find trade imbalance. They will use words like liberalization and free market economy. And there is an agenda behind all of that. And it's not for the global south. It is the global north who have, and sometimes they're led by big corporations who are pursuing an agenda of greed. I'll stop there and I'll open, give it back to, to you, Agata. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And uh, thank you, Brian. Um, before I move on, I want to see if um, uh, John Tarakan has something to, to add. Um, uh, <laughs> well, uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, hi. Chuck, Professor Verharan, uh, hi, Professor Stevenson. Uh, but I think one of the, uh, I mean, I would echo everything uh, that uh, Chuck and Brian have spoken about. Uh, I, I think uh, <laughs> uh, there's some things on the philosophical end that I would have a a separate discussion with Brian about, about technology's neutrality. Uh, but in any case, uh, I, I will say that philosophers, I mean, engineers are problem solvers. And as an engineering educator uh, for the past 30 plus years, uh, I think it's our responsibility uh, to educate our engineers to be problem solvers. Uh, but I think the critical thing here is the ethical component uh, which is that, uh, you know, let's find the right problems to solve. Uh, we don't need to be solving problems that, you know, that, that, that are resulting in solutions that uh, continue to uh, result in growth of inequity and, uh, you know, and, and not result in, in changes in the quality of life of the a vast majority of people on this planet. I mean, I think the, the great need that we have here uh, and the great responsibility we have as engineers, as educators, uh, is that you know, there are uh, billions, literally, of people who do not have the very basic essentials of life required to, to, to flourish. Uh, what we see as, as uh, essentials, as, as necessary, to continue to, to, to live the lives we're living. And, you know, uh, we, we, we not, I'm sure all of us have, have walked in, in, in protests where the chant of no justice, no peace uh, has, you know, has echoed. And uh, when, when billions of people don't have clean water, don't have access to toilets, uh, don't have access to the internet, don't have access to all of the very things that, you know, have been, uh, have, have been basically listed as essential for a quality life, um, we're not going to have peace. So, so it's, it's critical. We're going to continue to have, have tension and conflict. And so it's critical that we, we continue to educate uh, and uh, create uh, the technologies uh, and transfer those technologies that, that lead to improving people's lives. Uh, I'll stop there because really, uh, you know, we can all keep going on and uh, this is really a session for some questions. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Fedota. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, John. And uh, thanks again, uh, Chuck and Brian. 
um, I, and, and what you said is, is, I echo all of what you said. Um, and uh, I have, uh, I have, I, I have, I had some thoughts uh, going through my head while you were talking. For example, when you talked about Father Godfrey in the in Benin in the 2018, this was definitely a very, I, I think for the first time, ICAT was located at the right place uh, for me, uh, and um, and so so I I, I see what, what you mean. And uh, since, since then, I have been pondering about this eco-villages concept, thinking about we've had eco-villages in our ancient time. And, uh, I, I, but now to find a replica of what Father Godfrey is, is doing is quite difficult. I still haven't located something similar to what he has been saying. Uh, but I am sure my ancestors have been living this kind of life uh, uh, nat naturally, that's the way of life uh, in this supply chain system, ecosystem uh, going around. So uh, I, I, I don't know, it's been dismantled and, uh, and we, we need to uh, look at that and look at how we can uh, bring it back. Uh, I am, um, I, I thank you, Brian, for uh, for for mentioning uh, the the bit about uh, uh, the conferences were more academic at the beginning, uh, but uh, but then we've got a uh, development in terms of, of 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 practitioners, people who are on the ground doing real things. Uh, they 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 came on board, and that really enriched uh, the conferences. Um, I I see you. And I also see Kiniwa from uh, uh, Kenya, who is really working with communities uh, to basically pr provide those very basic services with appropriate technologies that uh, John Tarakan was talking about. It's, what is it about empowering people if they don't have clean air or clean water or, 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 or energy or uh, none of that? And then how, how can they be empowered in that way? And this is really the gist of, 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 of the move, the, the, our group, uh, appropriate technology to empower uh, uh, people. So thank you for, for your comments. And uh, I don't wanna take time myself and I would like to, we've got quite a few people now from the society. Uh, as more people came on board. Uh, there is Rufaida, there is uh, Safa. Safa Suleiman is, is wearing two hats. She's uh, a, a part of our uh, society, but she's also at the University of Khartoum and she's part of the local organizing team. So she, you might have met her last, uh, last joint meeting. Uh, there is uh, uh, Rufaida who just joined in, but, and then there is uh, Rawa. Uh, Rawa, uh, Rawa and Mujahid, if you remember in Kenya, we had a, a, a couple who were just married uh, 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 as part of our large group in, in Kenya, there was Roa and Mujahid, and they had just gotten married and they came and presented papers there, but it was also, I think, their honeymoon. So it was really fantastic. <laughs> and uh, so Roa is also on board. Um, so I, and, and uh, I wanna just welcome my classmates, uh, Intisar, she's uh, here. Well, Roa and Mujahid now are online. Uh, Mujahid is there, and I want to welcome Intisar, uh, Dr. Intisar is my classmate uh, from uh, my, our years in the University of Khartoum, and uh, she's specialized in, uh, in uh, computer security. Um, I, uh, I want to give a chance first to people on the call here, and Isra, you can uh, check if there are uh, questions on uh, Facebook, you can bring them here. But at the moment, we can uh, uh, take any comments from people. Uh, I think Marwan, you might have something about this problem solving, being an engineer yourself. And Sheza. So I will give Marwan and Sheza uh, the first chance. And then uh, the rest of you, please just raise your hand so we can uh, alternate the, the, the. So any comments on what Chuck and Brian and John 
have uh, shared with us. Uh, thanks, thanks uh, Rada, uh, Charles, Brian, and uh, John Therakan. I think uh, the the key word I, 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 I love to hear here is uh, problem solver. We need to grow on because I am I am engineer, but I also uh, inspired by this uh, philosophical uh, framework that uh, make uh, make uh, the engineering uh, work for the benefit of uh, of mankind. I think uh, these uh, two combination it give us um, a way. In order to uh, to 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 re-engineer the engineering itself toward uh, empowering uh, people and uh, make solutions that, uh, as uh, John Thera can uh, talk, not make uh, additional consequences uh, problem, and um, also uh, to 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 empower people and and. And, and 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 to 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 make a trade-off between harmony and maintainability. I think uh, for our uh, South uh, developed uh, country, we need uh, that philosophy to lift our people uh, up and uh, solve many problems uh, at the basic uh, infrastructure as. Uh, uh, explained by Berhan. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Marwan. Uh, there is a chance for people on the call. And Isra, is there any question you want to share? Yes, Dr. Gado, there is a question from Anna. Anna Idris, she asking about the nature of uh, uh, research can be participated in an ICAT uh, conference. And also, uh, what if the research has uh, not got uh, any results yet? And um, how if she want to participate uh, with Boster and, with, uh, and also with the research paper? Uh, what was the last? Thing with the poster and what else? Uh, uh, if she wants to uh, participate uh, in the ICAT conference with poster uh, or research paper. I, I think I responded to Fatma on the on the Facebook, but um, for the benefit of, of everyone, um, we have the four types of presentations. Um, and uh, her, her work, since it's kind of halfway, it's still illegible for oral presentation, depending on how well the paper is, is written. And uh, 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 that it could be still presented in the paper presentation. And these papers will be uh, uh, published in the proceedings and uh, the best of them, uh, we, 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 are ta we are targeting uh, uh, the publication of the best papers in a special journal, uh, a special issue of a journal. Uh, related to uh, Arab African innovation. So, but if she feels that the, the work is still very in, st still she wants much feedback uh, in, on it. That's like the purpose of her, uh, of her participation. Then a poster will be a very good uh, uh, option because in the poster session, there is more time for interaction between the people who are interested in your own, in your work to come around you in that poster and then you can discuss with them in the paper session not everyone in the room will be very interested in what you are presenting uh, there will be people who are interested in, but people are waiting for the next paper for example so, so you will get only a chance of two three people giving you feedback of course there is much interaction that happens in the breaks and in the all the kinds of uh, activities, but uh, but a poster session has got this uh, strength that that people who are very interested in your work, those are the people who will come gather around you 
and you will get really straight feedback and, and, uh, and people will be discussing with you more detail. So a poster session could be a, a, a better option. I mean, there are others who are not related to you, uh, which is the technology fair or the workshop. So it seems that these, uh, the, the paper session or the poster session would be, um, would be more, uh, more relevant. The paper is, go is more taxing. It's 12 pages, uh, eight or 12 pages. Uh, and the, but the poster session, we, we, we require a shorter paper, something like an extended abstract. So it's a less taxing uh, um, uh, endeavor. So um, I, I hope this answers your question. And if anyone wants to add, um, there are people on, on this call who have presented posters and have presented papers. So I, I hope that they can uh, uh, give, uh, give their own also feedback as, as, uh, as people who've been in these two experiences. If they want to add something, say, uh, Fatma, uh, you've, you've done both. Uh, Fatma Salah, are you with us? Uh, Fatma seems not to be hearing me for some reason. If, uh, if Marwan, Marwan, you want to, to add something, you also really presented both. You had a poster session at some point and also you had a paper. And if Chuck or Brian or, or, or John, if, if yeah, you yes, want to add something. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, I was listening to you. Yeah, okay. so. Uh, add yeah, something. I think yeah, I think the poster also for not finish it idea or I mean, if you have some idea, but you still you didn't do any field work or I mean, it's less than the, the wallpaper. So I think it's good if you have just idea, but you didn't know how you didn't go further in the analysis or you didn't collect enough data to make the analysis. So I think the poster is, um, is a good option. Uh, because then you will explore the idea, you will present the idea in a very nice way and the people will talk as you said, Tiktorada, and you will have more idea and maybe you have more comment in, in the methodology and everything. But I think the poster also have all the components of the paper. So you're gonna have the title. Um, um, of course, you're gonna present it in a, in a, in a, in a poster uh, format, but you're gonna find like all the elements of the main paper, of, uh, of the main paper, but I mean, in a simple way. So I think, yeah, for the big, for uh, new ideas, for not finished research, it's good to have a uh, poster presentation. Thank, thank you, Fatma. Um, okay, I, I, I see Intisar has her hand raised. So Intisar, if you wanna come in, probably you have a comment on what you heard from Chuck and Brian and John. Uh, yes, please. Hello, hi everybody. Hi, Rada. And, uh, <laughs> hi. Uh, in fact, this is my first time to join. And uh, ah, hello. Right. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we hear. Right. Okay. Uh, first time I join um, in a meeting with you, and I, um, although I came a little bit late, but uh, I enjoyed what I heard from the gentlemen there and um, at the beginning. And uh, I probably need to know more. It might be of some help also to you in this at some point. But um, like there is one, um, something stopped me in uh, Brian's speech when he mentioned something about um, ethics and technology. And uh, this part interested me really. Because, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's of course, there's been always a lot of talk about um, uh, ethics and, 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 uh, and the use of technology. And from my background, even in, in security, I find this uh, really it could be of some, uh, sometimes really it's hard to get the balance right. And especially when we talk about uh, privacy and intruding privacy, intrude people's privacy and making them aware, the whole community of the right. And, um, and, and sometimes it's, it's, it's not 
like a straightforward. Sometimes there is a lot of things that can go behind people back in terms of like, um, I don't know from people who are in power or whoever, I don't know, other people. So um, yeah, technology, of course, is like of, of great use to people. Uh, but on the other hand, um, uh, I think when it comes to intruding people's privacy or not really making them um, aware of how other people are using this technology, it could be very much against them, even in most cases, uh, especially in countries like, uh, uh, let me say, I don't want to say in African countries as such, but in some countries in Africa. So, uh, yeah, this topic, I find it really very interesting. And um, <clears throat> in terms of ICAC, I really would love to know more so that I am, um, uh, as I said, if I can um, join you in the future and, and participate with you. So that would be great, really. So uh, I just thought I would say a few words and welcome you all and say I'm very happy to be in here with you. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Antisar. Uh, I I see Hassan Hamdoun coming on online, and another engineer. Um, excellent. Uh, uh, Brian, do you have something to say to Antisar or uh, Chuck? You because you both and 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 anyone else really on the call want to make a comment. Antisar is very concerned. That's her field and her biggest. Uh, biggest interest, people's privacy in these times. Well, I certainly agree that the issue of privacy is one of the top um, global concerns since social media in particular um, has become a behemoth and has excessive influence now on on governments um, you're well aware of the january 6th uh uprising takeover of the u.s capitol and a lot of that could be traced to the power of social media um, just a year ago i was reading edward snowden's book um, and Edward Snowden, as, as you know, was the one who got in trouble for exposing the, um, the US government uh, collaboration with, with um, corporations to, 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 uh, to listen and uh, collect information on what everyone is doing. So I'm, I'm empathetic with what you're saying. It is something that I think would bring a lively discussion in the next ICAT uh, because ethics and technology are very much intertwined. And that is that nexus of, of ethics, of economics and um, culture, they all come together with appropriate technology. And that has been my, um, my personal um, love for the subject of appropriate technology, because it brings that intersection. I live in the United States um, most of the time. And uh, certainly as I was a professor at uh, Howard University, the young graduates, especially in engineering, they often would want to go for the big company that offered the big money. And right there, you have a decision to make for the rest of your life. And if you don't know, um, I'll use the word ethics again, or you don't know the agenda of that organization, um, you think the world is uh, just apple pie, you are committing yourself um, pretty much onto a hook. Um, Yes, you can get out, but it's very tempting. And many engineers within the United States 
are not looking at problem solving so much unless it's problem solving for the well the problem solving for the organization that is paying them um, i can go on but i'll stop there um <laughs> uh. Does, uh, does anyone want to um, add to what uh, Brian said about uh, uh, Intisar's uh, comments? Uh, if, if there isn't, if Chuck, you don't have it, or John or anyone else, um, can I call on Sheza to, Sheza is, 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 um, is one of the people who, uh, uh haven't shared her story yet most of these people on the call have shared their stories with icat in uh, past events uh but uh but sheza hasn't so you might want to get a feel of what we've been uh sharing just by listening to her uh, story in brief um uh, sheza uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for our guest speakers. I hope you are all uh, hear my voice. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we yes. can hear you, Shaza. Continue. Okay. Uh, I'm a senior architect when I joined the uh, ICAT 8, and it was in Benin, Port Novo, and in Songhai Center. Uh, at that time, I'm thinking about uh, community development and about sustainability, but I don't see like a real project that uh, have uh, these ideas. I see it on the books, internet, and I do my own research, but I haven't seen it in Africa, especially. But when I go to Songhai, uh, went to Songhai Center, I see it alive. And when I came back, I, I think I'm a very lucky person to work uh, in an internally displaced uh, people project, which is in South Darfur. And I was a project coordinator. Uh, so I think I just put the Songhai Center on my eye when I negotiate or think about anything in this village, I think about, oh, in Songhai Center, they do this and we should do this also. And we have, I think, uh, many uh, ideas from Songhai Center and it benefits me a lot in this project and my colleague. Thank you, Shaza. That's, that's really fantastic. Uh, Isra, are there questions uh, on the Facebook that we need to deal with, or shall we just continue? Um, you can continue if you rather no more questions on Facebook. Oh, okay. Um, well, I I asked. Um, I still I'll, I'll give you a chance again, uh, Chuck, Brian, and and John uh, to to come in. Uh, but I want you to hear also some more of uh, these stories very briefly. Uh, because it will also help our uh, listeners. Um, I asked uh, my friends in the group uh, if they could um, say a few words about what it means for us here in Sudan uh, that uh, the next ICAT is coming. So uh, I, I, I think this is a big thing and we've talked about this. Uh, in our past sessions, but uh, but I wanted you to also uh, hear it, and I so I will start with this one, and if there is time, I will go to my next question that I shared with them. So I um, I want to borrow John Tarakan's way of uh, of doing the rounds. <laughs> so so please, I will uh, call on the first person whom I know is ready, uh, which is Marwan. And, uh, and then Marwan, you call on the next person. And the next person calls on the next person uh, from, uh, from the set of people who have shared their stories before, like you and Fatma and, uh, and Rawa and, uh, and Safa. Uh, so Marwan, you start. What does it mean? 
Thanks, Rad. I think uh, Sudan now in in the uh, critical transition, uh, fully with agenda of uh, inequality, transition to democracy, and um, there is a remaining uh, uh, structure of uh, inequality. It needs uh, a huge uh, work of, uh, of uh, engineering, problem solver, philosopher, to dismantle all this structure and to put uh, Sudan on the way uh, of uh, prosper and development. I think uh, this it is a very great time uh, and quality time to have this conference uh, on Sudan to bring uh, the wisdom of uh, appropriate technology and uh, the framework of uh, this uh, appropriate technology and to let our people and our engineer uh, and, uh, and economist and philosopher to think deep how uh, to empower people and how to make uh, this change uh, happen. I think our great uh, revolution, December revolution, with the freedom, justice, uh, peace, uh, it need uh, this, uh, this mind uh, set to, to make this uh, happen. Uh, so that I urge all uh, respective uh, professors and uh, listeners to work hard to make this uh, a special event for us and for the Africa and for the human sense. I think I will pass uh, the, the request to Rawa because in my thought Rawa, it represents our preferred um, uh, regions that uh, we have struggling about centrality of the government of the Sudan uh, versus uh, the region which are remote and uh, remote uh, of the heart and mind. Uh, so that uh, Rawa, if you listen to us, you can join. Thanks. Uh, Salaam alaikum. Hello, good evening everybody. Uh, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good evening, Rawa. Good evening, Father. Uh, okay. I think uh, uh, the importance of uh, ICAT being here in Sudan uh, next year, inshallah. Uh, we have many resources in Sudan, such as water, uh, large lands suitable for agriculture, and many, many things. So uh, the appropriate technology can present um, a lot of ideas, good ideas, good projects that it can be uh, impact really good in our environment, in our life. Okay, in, in many years past, we see the, the research uh, just in books, in, in papers, in, in desks, so we hope the next year, the future years, better. We can see ideas in, in real life. We can see project, good project in, in real life, in education, in health, in, in many domains. So I, I hope, inshallah, type, uh, about our experience in ICAT 6 in Kenya, that is, uh, very interesting, <laughs> as Dr. Gahada say. So we live beautiful days uh, that can never forget. For me, uh, passion, uh, a good, really good, valuable relationships with other people and um, new ideas, new aspects to my how I see uh, our uh, so, I hope 
I can stop here and let uh, who's next? Ahmed, I think, can join us. Thanks. Uh, Ahmed Asir or uh, Ahmed I iPhone? Ahmed iPhone, I think. Yes, um, uh, this is Ahmed uh, Sadiq Muhammad. I'm an uh, engineer residing in the US. I'm uh, from uh, Sudan originally, of course. And uh, I'm interested in uh, finding solutions to the uh, uh, the energy uh, problems in Sudan, especially electricity, to have more people have access to electricity. Uh, I'm sorry about the background noise. I'm just uh, joined um, your event on the go. And uh, so apologies for that to begin with. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just listening to see if there is um, any interesting um, ideas that I could use in my research. Um, Right now, I'm just uh, trying to find solutions to the uh, ever um, increasing problem access electricity for the people of Sudan. Um, the statistics right now show that only 54% of the Sudanese population, we're talking about uh, the 40, out of the 40 million people living in Sudan, only 54% have access to electricity. And um, this is not good in this day and age. So uh, what I'm trying to do over here is that um, find the solution, especially with the renewable energy. Uh, you are muted, Ahmed. Ha Mid sentence. Okay. Um, can you can you hear me now? Hello. Yeah, we can yes. hear you. So what I'm what I'm trying to say over here is just uh, trying to research the uh, the problem to run to uh, you know find um, customer discovery. Uh, what's the real need in Sudan and what's the possibilities of doing this? Uh, on a small scale um, solution, I'm talking about the microgrid. I'm not talking about um, a governmental solution because I know the government itself is um, uh, is not capable of solving the problem right now at this point in time, either because the unwillingness, <coughs> excuse me, or um, lack of funds. So the Solution to the problem has to come in from the masses, uh, organic solution, uh, people like us, uh, trying to um, find ways to solve it. So um, what I'm trying to do is uh, maybe um, have like a microgrid co-op solar solution, like a group of houses connected together and have like solar panels um, in, in, a, in, a, in an empty space in between. And um, this way they have reliable electricity during the daytime. Anything that's extra above their um, consumption, they could um, sell it back to the grid for credit so that at nighttime after the, you know, there is no solar energy anymore, they could you know, get electricity back from the grid based on the credit that they loaned to the national grid on the daytime. Um, but of course, this solution is um, high in cost and acquisition. Uh, so we need to find a uh, way to finance it feasibly so that, you know, people, common people could afford it, communities I'm talking about, and, um, uh, and move forward with it. At least this way, it will be like a win-win situation for the people to have um, reliable electricity during the daytime. And uh, for the government, uh, they will uh, relieve that load of the national grid 
and divert that much needed electricity that they generate already from the hydropower to other sectors. I'm talking about the industrial sector for production, because we, again, uh, if we don't have um, electricity for production, you don't have production, you don't have, um, uh, you don't have, um, you don't have, you don't generate money for export and, and so on and so forth. So, so it's a cycle. It's all tied up together. Um, th this is where I'm coming from. So um, I thought about, you know, joining in this uh, event. A friend of mine sent me the, uh, the poster and I thought that might be interested, uh, interesting in terms of like uh, listening in and see if I can pick up any ideas from the um, uh, guys presenting anything over here help me out in this in this regard uh, right now i'm just in the in the stage of researching my you know um, the possibility of doing this and and i'm just uh, looking forward to any ideas so if you guys have any ideas or maybe um, know of somebody that you might be interested like you know um, uh, companies ngos um, even government officials who are who uh, could talk to and um, see if we can move this thing forward. Um, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, you are in the right place, and the and we are your community. We are those common people that are looking at the types of solutions we're looking at. There is a particular person I think I would uh, want to introduce you to and uh, also him, you to him because um, uh, he is working on these microgrid solutions. Uh, his name is Marcel, Professor Marcel. He's at the University of Puerto Rico. And uh, he's uh, actually right now in the process of applying to come to Sudan for his uh, Fulbright uh, uh, fellowship. And uh, he did the application and is waiting now. So he might be with us here in Sudan by the time the conference uh, happens, but I could connect you uh, with him uh, directly by email so you can um, exchange ideas. Another, another um, source of information um, is our website uh, because there are all these uh, energy has been a, a, a basically solid th uh, theme throughout the conferences I've been to and I've been uh, to ICAT since the second one in Zimbabwe in 2006 and, and, uh, and energy has always been a big component. So there is ample uh, kind of material on, uh, on, on, on projects that in different parts of Africa. Uh, but Marcel is looking at, uh, at Sudan as an example. I think he's even uh, 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 located uh, or, or is hoping to work in uh, the Kassala region uh, for his microgrid uh, experiment. So I will, I will, I will contact, connect with you um, uh, after the call uh, via email. If you can send it to me, on uh, on the chat, I I'll be very happy uh, to do that. Um, okay, I want to call uh, on Rufaida because she hasn't spoken uh, uh, about uh, Rufaida. Our question is, what does it mean uh, for us here in Sudan that ICAT is coming? Is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Rada, and thank you, everyone. Thank you really for, um, for um, joining our call today, our ICAT stories. Sorry, my internet is, wasn't good, so I was on and off. But for me personally, having ICAT in Sudan, is, uh, I look at it, I, I hope that it will um, expand the um, appropriate technology community in Sudan and draw the attention to this area where we need it a lot in, in so many areas, as uh, Marwan mentioned the inequalities in Sudan, uh, inequalities in access to a lot of services and also the issues with the energy. And my biggest concern is the climate change and how um, we are in the developing countries are the ones who are contributing the less to the climate change, but at the same time, the, the ones that are suffering the most from it, particularly for the farming and agriculture sector. 
And uh, I believe that we have a lot of um, indigenous knowledge and a lot of um, um, possibilities of using appropriate technologies to help communities and, um, uh, and farmers to adapt to climate change and also to, med to mitigate at some point. So uh, I hope that the, the conference will kind of um, in, uh, engage as many researchers or as many students to think about this and to start off uh, thinking about utilizing the, the what is available on the ground and appropriate technologies to start working on these issues because it is hitting us uh, so much and it's and it's going and it's and it's it's going to hit us more and, and and it's also contributing to the peace of the of the country because um the scarcity of natural resources and the extreme weather are creating more tensions between the different uh, groups and different tribes and that's also contributing to, to the instability in the country so working on this area i think it's really an important area for us and and thinking about what um, what is um, appropriate uh, technologies that we can harness to to get this issue solved is something that I really hope I can, can trigger and can and can be start um, uh, to to have research groups around it and and so on. So I'm looking so forward to it because we have so many things to do and and I believe that um, appropriate technology can can help us to to hit the road. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Rufaida. Um, does, uh, do you want to say something, Safa, with your two hats? Uh, the, the SKS, but uh, the a local organizing committee. What does it mean to the universities who are uh, hosting the, 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 the conference is being hosted by the University of Khartoum and Sudan University of Science and Technology. Uh, and Safai is from uh, the Khartoum uh, team. I, I think she left, something happened. Anyway, I will, um, I will give the floor to anyone who wants to add to what Marwan, Rufaida and Ahmed said about, um, about their thoughts on uh, what it means it's happening here. And uh, if, if there is no one, I want to. Uh, I think follow. I can go with you. Oh, oh, go ahead, Fatma. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm just uh, hello, everyone. Good, uh, good evening. And thank you, Professor, uh, to join us today in the Sudanese Knowledge Society session. And we look forward to see you, all of you, in uh, Sudan next year. And I think uh, if I remember your question well, Dr. Ada, you said, uh, what you want to, to see, what ICAT will bring to Sudan, or what's the question again? Sorry, I forget. What it means for us at this stage in our, uh, ah. in our being. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it is, as, as Rufaida said, it's a great time after the revolution, and, and now the people get excited about development problem. And I think there is a, a huge movement in the in the local people or social media to know more about the social movement, the mobility, the development problem, how we can tackle this. And I think it's also this a good opportunity for Sudan. And also it's a good opportunity for Sudan to learn from Africa because in the term of appropriate technology and development, there is a lot of African countries that achieve um, a great achievement in industry, in, in, uh, for example, in agricultural production, in natural, natural conservation, in a lot of aspects of development. So also I, I think it's a good time Sudan to learn from our neighbor, how they tackle, how they uh, tackle the problem issue. And of course, Africa is still um, not, not behind in the term of developing uh, development, but again, there's a lot of African countries that achieve a great uh, achievement in the development issue. So I think it's a good time to Sudan to learn and to, and to see what's happening in our neighbors. And uh, that is all for me. I, I wish good luck for all the people and I wish uh, ICAT it will be a very, um, very successful in, uh, conference this, this time, as every time. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Fatma. I wanna give the floor to Hassan. He wants to make an intervention, please. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Um, 
I'm Hassan Hamdun. Um, I, just, I joined a bit late and uh, I've been enjoying the conversation so far. Thank you very much to Professor Brian and to the speakers so far. Um, I, I just want to add a comment. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a researcher um, um, and, and I work in the telecom industry at the moment. Um, and previous research experience told me a um, few things. So I think uh, I just want to comment about what it means to have ICAT in Sudan. So uh, I've done some work in the energy and healthcare um, technologies, um, mainly uh, trying to address um, um, the energy problem, uh, generation distribution, as well as uh, uh, optimized resource allocation of those resources. So I think for Sudan, um, I think the ICAT will be a great foundational stepping stone for us to really understand what it means to work from the ground up. So rather than, um, obviously, we have been importing technology, uh, and most of African countries does that. So we are all falling into that trap of vendor locking, uh, vendor uh, technologies that don't work, that are overpriced, that really uh, don't fit the purpose. So for me, I think that is a key point that we should really um, focus on. And I think there is there would be two key things for for the for the conference. Uh, one of them is is having that uh, embedding that mindset of problem solving to address um, uh, uh, distribution of infrastructure resources as energy and healthcare in particular as well as um, having that um, you know, um, grouping around a unified um, a common goal. Because um, my experience with the first IEEE conference in 2013 has taught me that I think there is a lot of potential in Sudan. There is a lot of researchers doing their own thing, uh, just digging. Um, uh, with, with things trying to, uh, to solve complex problems with limited resources. And we really need that, the conference to be that unifying um, place for those people to come together, uh, researchers, academics, uh, industrials, and practitioners to, to really create that community. I think it's there. We just need to, to make it more systematic. Um, and I think that will, will pave the way for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. That's that's very encouraging. Um, I want to give the floor to Safa. Uh, she wants to make a comment. Safa Sedeman. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, personally, uh, I'm excited uh, for the coming 10th ICAT that which will be held in Khartoum. Uh, for me, I think it will. Um, uh, give us many ideas, as Fatma said, it will um, tell us that appropriate technology will help us to improve or to develop our uh, country, our community, to um, uh, and also it improve or it will tell us that appropriate te technology and research can help us to uh, solve conflict, to solve our problems. Uh, that by seeing uh, African countries uh, experiments, um, um, I think appropriate technology can help us. As I, nowadays, I'm working on a project about peace building, um, and that is all about collecting uh, data about incidents, and that will may help government, may help community for. Uh, developing very early alerting system. So I think 10th uh, ICAT conference, um, which may um, put together government, community, researchers, academia, and all stakeholders that may approve appropriate technology can help us in developing Sudan. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Safa. Um, Marwan, uh, you have a comment to add before we go back to our speakers? Come yes. I, I, raise, I raise the last uh, question to Veran, Professor Veran and, uh, and, uh, and Brian. Uh, it's about the uh, privacy accommodation of, um, of uh, information via social media. But uh, what we afraid more, it is a spread of uh, hate uh, message using um, uh, social media. How, uh, how uh, the tackling of misinformation, it is a part of um, uh, philosophy of uh, survival or uh, uh, less conflict or something like that because we face this uh, a lot these days in Sudan and it may be jeopardize all our march to freedom, justice, and inequality. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marwan. Um, because we have about 15 minutes, I want to go back to Charles and to Brian. And um, basically, any I want to I want you to do everything. Basically, uh, reflect on what you've heard, uh, as well as add comments as you wish. Uh, but as well as um, as well as uh, doing something uh, from uh, on one of the questions I, I had also um, wanted you to talk about and uh, Ahmed and Hassan uh, touched on them in their comments, uh, which is this change of mindset that we need for appropriate technology to, to, to flourish and become a movement. We, 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 have, uh, we have some work to do on, uh, on, uh, on changing mindsets and um, and I think uh, Schumacher, uh, uh, Ernest Schumacher, uh, title of, of, uh, of the book, and, uh, which is building also on pe people before him. But this idea of, of, of small is beautiful, uh, a study of economics as if people mattered, that, that title I thought was a powerful title. And uh, he was talking about this changed mindset from big is better, to small is beautiful. So I want you to also ad address that somewhere in your uh, in your final closing uh, remarks. So the floor is yours. Uh, we, I don't know who wants to go in first. Uh, shall I just say uh, we go with the same order, uh, Chuck and then Brian? The floor is yours. Can you hear me, Gada? Yeah. yeah. Do Can you, you want to come in first? Yeah, come in first then. We can hear you. Yeah, I'll come in. I, um, I've been having some internet problems, but I think I'm okay. Uh, you asked about Small is Beautiful. And before I, I, um, I respond to that, I wanted to, as I was listening Okay, B B Brian. Um, Can you hear me? I'm yes, back. We, we lost you a little bit. Continue. But, but restart. restart. Am, am I okay? Am I, um, can you all hear me? We, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm so sorry. Um, just a quick story. I was a young person coming up oh we 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 lost you again brian this is a fantastic story you were a young yeah. you were young okay go ahead <laughs> <laughs> okay yes um I was in uh, Sierra Leone. I was just passing through and I stopped by the engineer's school there. Uh, um, I was only there for a day or so and I met a professor in engineering and 
I asked him what he does. He was a mechanical engineer. But he said that the problems that I have to I think if, if he close the video and talk on this rule, the audio will be better, the internet. Yeah. Uh, Brian, if, if you switch off the video like we do here in Africa most of the time. <laughs> <you should>. Exactly. <laughs> Adap technology adaptation. I'm going to stop the video and, and maybe that is, will help. Um, sorry about that one more time. Yes, the professor said that he has to deal with all kinds of problems as an engineer, and it's not his specific training in mechanical engineering that mattered, but Maybe you should give it to Chuck because I'm every time I speak, I get cut off. Uh, should I continue? Yes. Okay, I'm so sorry. Um, the point is that as an engineer or a technology person, we need to be aware of many, many fields. And as you talk about um, Sudan in this uh, transition to a, a new uh, I think Ada, uh, his, his talk is very important. If, I know, uh, I know, and we are halfway through the story as well. We want to hear the rest of the story. <laughs> go Dada, ahead, what Brian. do you suggest? Uh, but Brian, just go ahead. We are used to this. It happens to all of us. So don't okay, don't have okay. uh, uh, any pressure. I'm encouraging you all to become experts in everything. I am a civil engineer, but over the course of my career, I have become very knowledgeable about environment, energy, um, agriculture. I'm very much into what's going on in agriculture as uh, Yeah, so agriculture as well. Uh, right now I'm putting a proposal together on beekeeping in Kenya. The point is that, the, and the challenge for all of us is to learn about everything because the development road ahead requires you to know ethics and to be connected with one another and to learn from one another to solve the problems that are ahead. That's The last thing I will add, um, going back to Shoemaker's book, Small is Beautiful. Um, I think about the predator out in the field. It could be a lion. Um, when they chase down the antelope or the uh, whatever animal they're chasing, they don't get all of them. They only get enough for now. And I think that principle is part of small is beautiful, the principle of enough. And it is only greed that will um, change that agenda. Of course, small is beautiful is about being locally based and smaller scale. But knowing when is enough is a big part of 
appropriate technology. I'm finished. <laughs> ah, thank you, Brian. Uh, what a great point to finish with. And um, I also zoomed into your point about that we are told in universities to be specialized, to just stay within our discipline. And uh, challenging that uh, in your comments was, uh, was very important. We, we need to take up this, uh, this topic some, some time um because it is anti our training uh and we 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 have been uh trying to um unchain ourselves and i think uh, uh the, the concept of appropriate technology helps with that uh, and i think uh, people on this call have also stretched out to other fields uh through the, through their works different uh, different work so I'll give the floor now to uh, Chuck. Please. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, on the small is beautiful, I just uh, would like you to pay a little bit attention to the way the brain works. And the brain's purpose, it, brain has two purposes. First, to complexify all of our experience by creating these wondrous things in technology and all the arts and uh, trying to figure out how those wondrous things are going to transform our lives. But the second part of the brain is to reduce all of the billions of points of information that we have incoming and that we send out to a very simple package that allows us to guarantee our survival and flourishing. So small is beautiful is just one, an, one more way of saying that's the way the brain works. And if the brain works properly, then uh, we have a great chance of surviving and flourishing. So on Mar Marwan's point, I think it's really important to pay attention to engineering as problem solving. I love etymology. The, the etymology of the, the word problem comes from Greek and pro means in front of, blem means thrown. So a problem is literally that which is thrown in front of you. And uh, it can be good, it can be bad, but that is our human nature to solve problems. And we do that by exercising what distinguishes us as, as human beings, and that's our creativity. Intisar makes a really great point about uh, ethics and technology. And the question that I'd raise there is the question, the, the most important question there is, why be ethical? And one reason is what John Therrican said, and that's uh, no, uh, the, the marchers uh, cry. No justice, no peace, and uh, that means uh, if there is no justice, there will be no peace, and no peace means terrorism, and that will be state-sponsored and local sponsored uh, and local group-sponsored. But uh, the whole idea is that you should work to be ethical in order to make sure that uh, you can do what you want to do, and what you want to do is first governed by empathy to reach out uh, to other beings, whether they're humans or animals or even the environment itself, and include that in your sense of community. Um, with uh, uh, Marwan's point again, the freedom, justice, peace, the, the Sudanese revolution, uh, that's a really critical point. And to put that revolution in juxtaposition with the ICAT, I think is one of the most important things we can do in planning for the conference. Ahmed uh, made a really good point. 54% of uh, uh, people in Sudan have access to electricity. Whoa. So um, in addition to what you said, Gada, that you're going to hook him up with Marcel, you should also let him know about what you're doing with the Barefoot College in Sudan in terms of village solarization, uh, where the villages are off the grid, and also what uh, Kinoa is doing in Kenya. So um, Hassan's point, uh, Hassan, that you mentioned you were working in telecom. I think uh, that the key to the success of the Songhai villages is Godfrey Zamujo's complete reliance on telecommunication, uh, informa um, information communication technology more generally, 
And that is why the villages are so successful because his idea is that unless everyone in the village is grounded in an education all the way from primary through post-secondary education, there can be no chance that the villages will be autonomous, self-sustaining, independent, completely green, and uh, the kind of village that is truly an ethical eco-village. So the last point on human nature, um, what are we supposed to do as human beings? Well, we came from a universe that is constantly creating, destroying, and recreating itself. And that universe uh, uh, is responsible for our creation, if you leave. And uh, that uh, universe has made us as creators. So um, to be the kinds of creators we really can be, we need every human being working on that. And appropriate technology is the key to reducing scarcity, whether energy or other resources, making sure the work that we do as humans is work that we really engage in because it is our creative consciousness doing it, not repetitive, mindless robotic labor, and making sure that virtually every human being, this is W.B. Du Bois talking through me, make sure that every human being has a university level education. Um, thanks very much, whoops, a little bit over time, but uh, thanks very much for the privilege of talking to you. So, uh, Mia, 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 and Shukran Jazilan. Ah, fantastic. Um, yes, we are now coming to a close and um, we really want to thank you and Brian for coming on. Uh, there is a lot of uh, comments on the on the chat. If you want to have a look at them, by Rufaida and uh, Hassan, and uh, really thanks Chuck and Brian. You really enriched our sessions uh, today, and um, I'm very grateful um, for that. And grateful for the people who joined us, Intasar, Hassan, and Ahmed. And um, there were a few people who came in and 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 and, and went out during the session. So um, if, um, if there is any last quick comment from anyone before we close, um, and I want also to announce that we stretched our ICAP stories uh, series to end next week uh, because of, of uh, slotting in this very special uh, uh, session. So next week will be our final, uh, 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 our final um, chat about ICAT stories. We, we might then uh, invent something else as the time goes by uh, through the planning. Um, so with that, I want to thank you all and uh, we will uh, meet again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I, I forgot. Thank you. I forgot if Isra wanted to say something. Isra was doing the technical side and didn't really get a chance to say something. So Isra, if you want to say something very quick before we close. Thank you, our guest, for this uh, nice session. Uh, just uh, you know, I would like to add, as my colleague is there, um, we need uh, really appropriate technologies so we can uh, find simple solution for our current problems. Thank you all. Thank you all, thanks. Okay, I'll say goodbye to everyone and uh, we'll meet again. Thank you. Bye.